This diagram summarizes the, the pattern of disease that we observe in patients who have cirrhosis. Cirrhosis which of course can in turn lead to chronic liver failure. <clears throat> now cirrhosis and chronic liver failure are conditions which um, are, are important, uh, especially for those studying medicine. The hospital has usually got a great number of patients um, within it who have chronic liver disease and cirrhosis and it's it's a common question or a common challenge for medical students to examine patients and to identify uh, and elicit all of these different features of chronic liver failure when they're examining patients. So this is, this is really very important for medical students. And if we just remove the labels, what I'd like to do is go through just the image to enable you to have this uh, useful image in your mind's eye such that when you're examining patients and um, going through the motions of, 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 of trying to elicit these signs, you have this in your mind's eye so that you can recall the information that you need quickly and accurately and you know exactly what you're looking for. So why don't we start at the top on the left hand side we've got nails and fingers and hands there are a variety of signs that one can identify there you can have problems with um, these white discolorations uh, of the of the nail which are called leukonychia these tend to occur in association with low albumin levels hypoalbuminemia you can have problems with Terry's nails and you may be able to identify this in patients. This is where the, the, the nail is, is white approximately but is red uh, more distally and it's believed to be associated with telangiectasia under the nails. Patients may have that classic sign, finger clubbing, where there's a bulbous quality to the fingers and they've got this um, curved appearance uh, at the base of the nail. Um, patients may have Dupuytren's disease and there's believed to be an association between cirrhosis and Dupuytren's disease. This fibroproliferative condition where patients have a flexion deformity of their fingers, typically the fourth or the fifth fingers. Patient may have palmar erythema. And you may also be able to elicit this phenomenon over here which is the liver flap as it's called or the asterisk asterisk now you simply ask the patient to hold their hands out in front of them and to cock their wrists back and you ask them to hold their hands still and if they struggle to do this and instead tend to beat their hand forwards just ever so slightly this is an indication of chronic liver disease and is associated with encephalopathy which is demonstrated up here so patients can have problems with the normal functioning of the brain they may also have problems with enlarged parotid glands illustrated here if you look at the chest you may see telangiectasia these classic spider nevi which can sometimes be present patients with cirrhosis will quite often have an enlarged liver which can be detected on examination and they may develop portal hypertension as well and this can be this can manifest in a number of ways portal hypertension can lead to esophageal varices uh, and these dilated vessels can bleed and may lead to hematemesis the vomiting of blood which of course can be quite serious patients may have an enlarged spleen splenomegaly and they may also have capates medusa, these dilated vessels around the umbilicus. And these all relate to portal hypertension, raised pressure within the portal system draining into the liver. Last thing to mention is ascites as well, whereby, whereby patients have fluid uh, within the abdominal cavity. This onerous crab over here reminds us of cancer and hepatocellular carcinoma can occur in patients with cirrhosis and we must remember that. This man has breasts 
and this condition whereby a man develops breast tissue or the appearance of breast tissue is called gynecomastia and this can occur in patients with cirrhosis as well. Because the, because the liver isn't functioning properly um, it doesn't produce the normal um, factors which are required to enable um, blood to clot through the clotting cascade and as a consequence patients may tend to bleed quite profu profusely following a cut to the skin and it may take longer than normal for that blood to stop. Last few things to comment on now um, testicular atrophy can occur the blood sugar levels can sometimes be low so hypoglycemia may occur and blood albumin levels can also be low hypoalbuminemia can occur so this hopefully summarizes for you all these different features in a single clear visual format and you I would hope will be able to close your eyes take this image with you and recall with quite considerable accuracy all of these different features the next time you go and examine a patient you'll have that information at your fingertips hopefully and you'll get extra confidence uh, because of that